guys and welcome back to my channel. It has been a hot minute since I shared a YouTube video with you guys. Um, I've been moving and doing lots of things. All of that is over on my Instagram if you want to check it out. I will link it below for you. But I am back today with another free crochet pattern for you guys. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a bathing suit for your Gracie doll because she is bit, needs to enjoy this fun summer weather while it lasts. Two, you can find this free crochet pattern and like 50 other ones on my blog absolutely for free at craftyconcept.com slash free patterns. I will link it for you below as well so you can check that out later. And another thing before we hop on over to my table, this pattern also pairs perfectly with the flamingo pool floaty pattern that is already free on my blog and here on YouTube. Links again below for you. All the things are linked below. But look how fun she looks and ready to go swimming in her bathing suit and flamingo floaty. Disclaimer, this is just for pretend play. If you get this wet, it will get soggy. It might get ruined and it might get moldy. Um, so don't get her wet. Just use it for pretend play or for photographs or uh, like party decor, whatever you're into, but it, she probably does not need to go in water and this will not actually keep her afloat. So keep that in mind before we get started. I do have a few things to talk about when it comes to sizing your Gracie dolls bathing suit at the end of this video. Um, I learned some things as I was designing this. So make sure you stay tuned to the very end so I can show you a little bit of the sizing information. Let's hop over to my table and see what you need to make your own Gracie doll bathing suit. Here is what you will need to make your Gracie doll bathing suit. You will need some worsted weight yarn, ideally in the same brand that you use to make your Gracie doll in. I'm using I Love This Yarn in the color This Word. I'm not gonna try to pronounce it because I will probably say it wrong. Um, an H crochet hook. This one is Clover More brand, which is my favorite hook brand to work with. Highly recommend this brand. A pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, and potentially a tape measure. And you're also going to need a stitch marker. Oop, there it is. You're also going to need a stitch marker because this pattern is made working in the round and you will need this to hold your place so you know where each row or round ends. All right, on to the pattern. Okay, the first thing we are going to do is make a slip knot and then chain 28. Twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Now we are going to take this chain and connect it, take this end and connect it to this end to make like a circle, like a little loop situation. Um, so you just wanna make sure you don't get it twisted. So to do that, I'm gonna run my fingers along the tops of all the chain stitches, making sure it's nice and straight and then bring the back around, reach the front, insert my hook into the first stitch, join it by pulling through both loops on my hook. Of course, I split my yarn, and then chain one to secure. Now we're gonna start round one, and we are just going to single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around for a total of 28 single crochets, starting in the stitch where you just joined. So we will be putting a single crochet in that spot. I like to work in the back bumps, so that's where I just joined. But if you look at your V stitches, normally stitches go in under the V loops here. I like to turn it and go under these back bumps that are joining all of the V stitches together. I just think it gives it a cleaner, crispier look. That is a personal preference. So if you don't wanna do that, you don't have to. The pattern will still work the same. So we're gonna single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around, that's one. You will notice that I yarn under instead of the traditional yarn over. That's just how I taught myself to crochet. It makes single crochet stitches slightly tighter. So my tension is gonna be a little bit different than yours if you yarn over and I yarn under, but in the long run, it doesn't make a big difference on the size of your finished piece. I'm going to continue to single crochet 28 stitches and then I will come back and we will get on to round two and I will show you how I use a stitch marker just in case we have any beginners out there that aren't used to working in the round. Okay, two more stitches, 27 and then 28. I just turned on the overhead lighting in the room so if the lighting has changed for you, that is why. I hope it is clearer. Okay, just finished my 28 stitches. My next stitch, since I'm working in the round for round two, is gonna go directly into the top of our first single crochet, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a stitch marker 
in my last stitch so that's where I know where the, the round ends. So when I get to my stitch marker, that's the end of the round. For round two, we will be increasing two times, giving us a total of 30 single crochets in the round instead of 28. To do this, we are going to single crochet 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then we are going to increase in the next stitch. So right here, I'm going to put two single crochets, one, two. Now we have 15 stitches. We're going to do that again. Repeat 13 and then an increase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then we are going to increase in this last stitch, which is the end of our round. So we can take out our stitch marker, put two single crochets together, one and two. You can see they're two together in the same spot. That is our increase. Now, put my stitch marker back into the last stitch so I know where my next round ends and get ready for round three. For rounds three and four, we're just going to single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around, giving us a total of 30 stitches in the round. And that again is for rounds three and four. So I'm gonna single crochet to my stitch marker, then move it up and then single crochet to my stitch marker again for rounds three and four. And then I will come right back here with you guys to do rounds, you know, after four. <laughs> Okay, just finished round four. Now we're gonna do round five, which is gonna be another increase round. So we will put two increases on this round to go from 30 to 32 stitches. We're gonna start by single crocheting five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're gonna increase in the next stitch, two single crochets together for our increase. Very good. Now we're gonna single crochet 15. One, two, three. 15 okay now we're going to increase in this next stitch here one two and then we're going to single crochet until we get to our stitch marker and it should be eight stitches if my math is correct one sorry two three four five six seven and eight is in the stitch with the stitch marker. Perfect math. Okay, move it up. Get ready for round six. For round six, we're just going to single crochet one time in each stitch around until we get back to our stitch marker, giving us a total of 32 single crochets in the round. Okay, now we are ready for round seven. This is another increase row, so we're gonna go from 32 to 34 this time. We're going to single crochet in the first 11 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, excuse me, nine, 10, 11, and then we're going to increase in the next stitch. So two single crochets together, boom. Now we're going to single crochet 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, increase in the next stitch. So two single crochets together, one, two, and then we're gonna single crochet three, giving us a total of 34 stitches in the round and move up our stitch marker. Okay, for round eight, we are just going to single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around giving us a total of 34 single crochet stitches in the round. For round nine, it's another increase round. We're gonna start by single crocheting eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Increase in the next stitch. One, two together is our increase. Single crochet, 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Increase in the next stitch. One, two, then single crochet, thirteen, back to our stitch marker. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, giving us a total of 36 stitches in the round. Go ahead and move up your stitch marker and get ready for round 10. We're just gonna single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around for round 10, giving us a total of, again, 36 stitches in the round. So no increases for round 10. Okay, finishing up round 10. And then ready for round 11, which is another increase round. We're going to single crochet six. We're going to single crochet 15, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Increase in the next stitch, one, two, okay. And then we're gonna single crochet 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, increase in the next stitch. And then if my math is correct, we should have six stitches left in the round. One, two, three, four, five, Six, awesome. And that gives us a total of 38 single crochets in the round. For round 12, we are just going to single crochet one time in each stitch. So no increasing in round 12. I will finish this and be right back. Okay, for round 13, we are going to single crochet one and then two, and then we're gonna increase right there. Okay. Single crochet 17. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Increase in the next stitch. One, two. Okay. Then single crochet 17 again. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. That is the end of round thirteen, giving us forty single crochet stitches in the round. For round fourteen, we will not be increasing, just single crocheting one time in each stitch all the way around, giving us again a total of forty stitches in the round. Okay, just finished round eighteen. Now we're going to seam. This is going to be the bottom of our bathing suit, like where her little legs come out. So we're going to seam it up by flipping it inside out. This is the wrong side of our stitches, and then we are going to squish it closed on the side of where our working yarn is. Excuse this big hair. I shed like a golden retriever. Okay, now we are going to, some of the stitches will be through the front and the back pieces of our sides here, and some of them will just be through one side. Um, I will show you that right now. Insert our hook back into our work here. Okay, so where the stitch marker is, is where our first stitch is gonna go. So it's gonna go into the, where the stitch marker is and then into the next stitch right next to it if we were still going in a circle. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull that stitch marker out. And then we're gonna single crochet this together, both sides for one, okay? We're gonna do two more. So three total going through front and back pieces two, and then the third one. Okay, perfect. 
Now we are going to slip stitch five times in one side of our bang suit to create our leg holes. I'm gonna go on the side closest to me, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna do five slip stitches, one, and I like for these to be kind of loose. You don't want them to be as tight as you can do it um, because then your leg hole will be weird. Four and five, perfect. Now we need to go, we're gonna single crochet the next five together, but we need to make sure our stitches are still lining up. So I'm going to actually go ahead and insert my hook into the first stitch, from, get ready for my single crochet, and then I'm gonna count five stitches from this one. One, two, three, four, five, and it's gonna go in this next one, because we're gonna imagine one, two, three, four, five is in line with these stitches here for the slip stitches. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert into that one. Now my bathing suit bottom is lined back up together. We are going to single crochet five, going through both pieces front and back. That's one, there's two, three, four, and five. Okay, and you can see our leg hole was created by the slip stitches there. So that's what the reason for that was. This is between her two legs. And now we're gonna do her next leg hole which is five more single crochet, or five more slip stitches. That's gonna make for her next leg hole. Again, not too tight. One, two, three, four, five. And then we need to go ahead and insert our hook into there for our next single crochet, but we need to make sure we match it up perfectly on this side. So we're gonna flip her and look. One, two, three, four, Five, and then the next one is where we're going. Okay, right there. And we should have three single crochets left. One, two, and then three in the last one. Now, our the biggest portion of our bathing suit is complete. We can clip our yarn and tie off. And sew in that tail, being careful not to sew closed your two leg holes. So now we've got these two leg holes there, ready to make the top of our bathing suit. So I'm gonna pretend that I sewed this in already. Just kidding, I'm gonna sew it in with you here on camera. Just in case we have any newbies that aren't familiar with sewing in their tails, I'm going to use this tapestry needle right here. You can find a link to these in the description of this video. Okay. I'm hoping my camera is still auto adjusting for you guys so you can, it doesn't get blurry. I apologize if it does. Hopefully you can still see what's happening. Um, I'm gonna just insert my hook, I mean my, my needle up into some stitches. I like to follow the natural line of the stitching like this, see how that just goes. And I have my finger in the inside here of the, of the piece and I can feel it's not poking all the way through. So this is literally hidden between the stitches. And then I'm gonna go this way, just follow the stitches, and then I'm gonna go back down. And then that will be completely sewn in, no issues, and you can snip off your tail. There we go. And you can sew in this other one here too. Uh, I'll let you do that on your own. Let's flip this right side out, popping out her little hip spots. That's where her little hips will go and get ready to make the top of our bathing suit. Okay, now that our suit is still flattened, we need to find the middle 14 stitches and I grabbed an extra stitch marker. Um, so we have two now to help us mark those just for the camera here, but you probably won't need two. I'm gonna estimate we're starting right here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then let's lay these down and see if they need to be moved. Those look really nice. Okay, so if it was too far over one way or the other, I would just start my, just move my starting point. I would just move them, you know what I mean? Either way to make sure we got the center 14 stitches. We're going to insert our hook into this side, right there. Um, this is the right side of my work, like, like literally the right, not left, but the right. I'm going to grab my yarn and join here like this, and then we're going to single crochet 14 across. So from this stitch marker to this stitch marker, including where we just joined. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. Okay, I just single crocheted across 14 stitches. It looked like my stitch marker was one too far over. So I had miscounted on my stitch markers, but my 14 are centered here with the bathing suit. So then we're gonna chain one and turn after our 14 stitches for row one of the top of our bathing suit, turn our work. For row two, we are just going to single crochet one time in each stitch, again for 14 stitches. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then we're gonna chain one and turn and get ready for row three. For row three, we're gonna start our decreases because we're making a cute little halter top. So we're going to decrease over the first two stitches. To do that, you're gonna insert your hook into the first stitch, grab your yarn, pull up a loop, insert your hook into the second stitch, grab your yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. That is our decrease. Then we're gonna single crochet 10 across the middle of our bathing suit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we're going to decrease over these last two stitches here. Insert, grab our yarn, pull up a loop, insert, grab our yarn, pull up a loop, three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all, chain one and turn our work. For row four, we are gonna single crochet one time in each stitch all the way across, giving us a total of 12 single crochet stitches. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Chain one, turn our work. For row five, we're gonna start with a decrease again. So just like we did before. Then we're gonna single crochet eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then end on a decrease. Perfect, okay, don't change just yet. Now we are going to make our straps. We are going to chain 25 stitches, and that will be our first strap for our little halter top bathing suit. One, two, three, four, five, six, 24, and 25. Now we can cut our yarn and tie off, boop, Okay, and then we're going to make our second strap. That's our first strap, but bathing suits, are, she's gonna need another strap. So we're going to insert our hook over here on the right side of our bathing suit top that doesn't have a strap already. Grab our yarn and attach it. And that counts as one of our, our single crochets. That counts as one of our chains. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way to 25. 22, 23, 24, 25, cut our yarn, tie it off, okay. Now we have both of our straps. This will be secured when you sew in your tail over here. Um, just make sure you sew it in and go over itself a couple times. We can do that on camera. But I wanna show you our two straps and I'm gonna show you how I like to end these. Um, I just like to pull it tight and then make like a knot right on the tip. Right, and just kind of scoot it up so it's right on the tip, just like that. Pull it nice and tight and then just clip that off. That works for me, that's what I do. Works just fine for me. I do that on both sides. Okay, making sure it's down as far as I can get it and clip that off. Now I'm gonna sew in this tail with you guys only because it needs to be done in a secure way. I mean, the baby doll isn't gonna be playing around in her bathing suit like it's just a doll. She is not alive, but we still don't want our strap coming off because that would not be fun for our pretend play for our kiddos. So I just went in right along the line of those stitches and pulled it nice and taut and it, it just switched right up to the point where it needs to be. Now I'm gonna go down into these stitches and then I'm gonna go across a little bit and then I'm gonna go right back up and across again, just to kind of go over my own tail. So it's extra secure, even though it's just for pretend play. 
No, no straps falling off for our, our kiddos pretend play. No, sir. Okay. And then we can cut our yarn. So in these last few tails and voila, you have an amazing bathing suit for your Gracie doll. And she is ready to go swimming at the beach or at the pool. Um, whatever tickles her fancy. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I did find some some sizing situations that I wanted to share with you guys. And I made another bathing suit. So this Gracie doll, I thought, before I saw this one next to her, I thought she was just stuffed more and that's what made her bigger. But after I got them next to each other and I was comparing them, pretty sure I made this one with a G hook and this one with an F hook and stuffed her more. So that's why she is much bigger and this bathing suit does not even come close to fitting her. I will put the measurements for both of, both of their torsos on the screen for you guys so you can see the difference uh, with the measurements. Um, and then also so you can compare them to your dolls before you make your bathing suit. For this one, I followed the exact same pattern, used the exact same yarn, forgot to bring it with me. So I will show you a side-by-side -side of the two of them next to each other right here in this photograph. But I used a J crochet hook to make the second one, the bigger one, and it's still a little tight on this gal. Um, it fits, but it's a little tight. Um, so maybe a slightly thicker worsted weight yarn would be better for a bigger Gracie doll or even adjusting the pattern itself um, if you are comfortable doing that. If not, I would just keep going up hook sizes until you find the right hook to make your Gracie doll's bathing suit. But if your Gracie doll has any measurements close to these two, again, I'll put that on the screen for you guys. And it's also on the blog post, but if it's got similar measurements to either of these, for this size, I would use a J hook or higher. And for this size, the H hook works just fine. I will put her bathing suit on her now so you can see um, how it looks on her. Actually, I just decided I'm going to dress her here on camera so you can watch how I put her in here uh, for those of you who might be struggling. So I just pop in her little feet first and then pull it all the way up to her body. And then you gotta kind of shove her little hip, her little hip corners into the corner of the bathing suit like that. And I, you can go right up in the leg hole to adjust it that way and then give it a nice little squeeze, making sure she's all the way in there and then the strap's gonna, gonna go to the back and that is where we will tie it on. And now she's ready for a day by the pool or at the beach. Be sure to check out the Flamingo Pool Floaty pattern if you haven't already. I will put links to everything in the description below. Thanks for watching, you guys, and thanks for 20,000 subscribers. That was new. Um, that happened while I was on a little YouTube break. I'm so thrilled 20,000 of you guys are interested in these free crochet patterns. It means the world to me. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments below, and I will answer them as fast as I can, or you can send me an email at ashley at at craftyconcept.com and I will see that there as well. Have an amazing day. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Spoiler alert, it is beach poolside themed. I'm going to squeeze out one more pattern before fall gets here. So if you like this one, stay tuned because next week I've got another fantastic Gracie doll summer pattern coming for you. Have a great day.